The error of using 7030 as your default RSI trigger ends today. I'm going to show you the statistically calibrated levels that replace it. Levels that adapt to RSI 2, RSI 14, RSI 100 and RSI 200. And I'm giving you the full RSI cheat sheet so you can keep those numbers and actually use them. On Apple Weekly, when RSI 2 tags the support zone, price reverses up. On daily Ethereum, when RSI 21 clears the resistance zone, it keeps running. On hourly Euro USD, when RSI 14 hits the overextension zone, that's where you see tops and bottoms form. Different assets, different timeframes, same behavior in the adaptive zones. This is why 7030 can't be your default anymore. It just doesn't adjust like this. You probably noticed I'm plotting RSI as candles, not just a line. This gives us way more detail in how it behaves around each zone. And it's finally possible. Just so you remember, this is educational only, not financial advice. First, let's talk about why 7030 breaks. The classic rule says, above 70 is overbought, below 30 is oversold. That sounds universal, but it's not. On short RSIs, you hit 70 and 30 constantly. On long RSIs, you never get there. So 70 does not mean the same thing on RSI 2 that it means on RSI 200. If a level doesn't mean the same thing across lookbacks, it simply can be a universal rule. Now some background, because this isn't me saying old, bad, new, good. Wells Wilder, who created RSI, already noticed that RSI tends to find support and resistance before the price does. Andrew Cardwell saw that RSI behaves differently in uptrends versus downtrends. In uptrends, it tends to live in the 4080 area, and in downtrends, it lives more in the 2060 area. Connie Brown formalized those kind of ranges. Later, John Hayden used the 4060 area as an early tell that a trend may be shifting. So for decades, Cirrus RSI work has quietly moved away from always 70, always 30, and towards the level depends on the context. What I'm doing here is making that idea measurable, consistent and reputable. I'm not discarding tradition, I'm quantifying it. So people have seen RSI behave in ranges for decades, but nobody ever gave it a single calibrated scale you could apply to RSI 2, RSI 14, RSI 100 and RSI 200. That's what we're doing now. Let's define what these zones actually are and I'll keep this in plain English. You can think of RSI movement the way you think of any distribution. The most stuff is normal, some stuff is trend, and some stuff is rare. Those three regions are the body, the shoulders, and the tails. This is a new. This structure comes from Nassim Nicholas Taleb's work. The body is the middle. That's normal chop. Price rotates and the pullbacks are usually controlled there. Statistically, that's roughly within plus minus 0.66 standard deviation or 0.66 sigma around the middle. The shoulders sit outside the body. That's where real directional trend tends to live. That's roughly from plus minus 0.66 sigma out toward about plus minus 2.14 sigma. In the shoulders, the market is moving with intent. And then there are the tails. The tails are past plus minus 2.14 sigma. That's rare, emotional and unstoppable. In the tails, behavior changes. The move gets fast, risk jumps. Two more landmark really matter for trading decisions. Around plus minus one sigma, you often get your breakout or breakdown confirmation around plus minus square root of 3 sigma, that's about plus minus 1.73 sigma, you often get peak momentum and the first serious chance of reversal. We're going to map those landmarks back into RSI values you can actually read on your chart. 
Let's do that with RSI 14 because that's what most people are used to. When we convert those Sigma landmarks back into RSI 14, here's where they land. The resistance zone is roughly from 59 to 63 and a half points. The support zone is roughly 36 and a half to 41 points. The overextension on the top side, what people usually call overbought, is the 72.3 to 76.6 area. The overextension on the bottom side, what people casually call oversold, is in the 23.4 to 27.7 area. Those are not hand-drawn numbers. Those are statistically calibrated from the sigma structure I just introduced. And most importantly, they even align with the thresholds you see in a lot of trading books. Let me slow down and show you how this looks in practice. We'll use RSI candles so we can get more detailed view of the market behavior. Look at the recent uptrend in gold. When RSI 14 tags the upper resistance in 59 to 63 and a half region, price very often stalls or rejects soon after. When RSI 14 tags the lower support zone in that 36 and a half to 41 region, price very often stabilizes or curls up in an up move. And finally, after the breakout, when RSI 14 drives into the extreme overextension zone, for example, up in the upper 70s, that's tail behavior. You get more speed, more instability, and calling tops is really, really hard. That's not normal continuation, that's brace yourself. Now I want to compare this to what most people are thought. Watch 7030 and what all the RSI secrets video tell you, watch the 50 point line. The idea is, above 70 is overbought, below 30 is oversold, and above 50 is bullish, below 50 is bearish. The 50 point line crossover, by the way, is the equivalent of price above the moving average versus price below the moving average which is not too sophisticated analytical technique. Link above if you want proof. Here's the problem. 7030 is static and the 50 line is binary. Neither tells you where the market tends to find support in the uptrend or where it tends to reject in a downtrend or how statistically rare a move is. All right. Now I'll show you how we get numbers like 63 and a half and 36 and a half and why those aren't guesses. Here's the problem we had to solve. RSI 2 and RSI 200 behave very differently. If you want a meaningful level on both, you have to put them on a short scale first. So step one is we transform RSI in a way that makes the extreme ends behave smoothly instead of going crazy near zero or 100. Step two, we standardize the transform RSI so that different lookbacks live on the same statistical scale. The important part there is a simple scaling factor, two divided by square root of n minus one. n is simply a lookback period of your RSI. After that step, a one sigma event means this is a meaningful push, no matter what length you're using. Now, we want to bring those standardized sigma threshold back into RSI 0 to 100 scale. To do that mapping back, we use a smooth S-shaped function called the hyperbolic tangent function. You don't need to know the formula. All you need to know is that it turns a sigma threshold, like plus one sigma, back into RSI value you recognize, like 63 and a half. That's how we get zones that are statistically comparable and still land on RSI's familiar uh, zero to 100 scale. On the screen, you're going to see this build line by line. We start with a standardized plus one sigma for RSI 14. It maps to about 0.27 once we run it through the smooth bounding step. When we convert that value back into RSI terms, 
it becomes 63 and a half. That's the breakout line on the upside. We do the same thing for minus one sigma. That maps back to 36 and a half in RSI 14 terms. That's the breakdown line on the downside. So now you can see 63 and a half and 36 and a half are not guesses. They are plus one sigma and minus one sigma levels expressed back into RSI scale you already understand. And this exact workflow is what gives us the resistance zone, the support zone and the overextension zones. This is why I'm saying the era of 7030 as your default ends today. These adaptive zones are calibrated and they scale with the lookback length you actually use. Now I'm going to give you something you can literally use right away. I'm going to put up the full table. This is the RSI cheat sheet. It replaces 7030. You can see the support zone, the resistance zone, and the overextension zones for RSI 2 all the way to RSI 200. Pause here and keep the numbers for the length you actually trade. The good news is that you don't need to calculate those levels by hand. That's what my trading view script does. Let me show you that quickly. The indicator is called RSI Adaptive Zones. On your chart, it draws the support zone, the resistance zone, and the overextension zones automatically for whatever RSI length you're using. You can show RSI as the familiar line, bars, or candles. You can obviously also pick colors and highlight the zones you choose. You'll also see the key levels right on the panel. So 63 and a half and 36 and a half aren't in your notebook. They are on your screen. The script is free and it's built to match exactly what we're seeing in this video. Now let me pull everything together into something you can actually act on. Here are three reads you can start using today. First, breakout and breakdown confirmation. Treat the plus minus one sigma level as the prove it line. A close above plus one sigma supports continuation. A close below minus one sigma supports deterioration. Instead of guessing, you're asking, did we actually clear the breakout zone? Second, structure in trend. In an uptrend, pullbacks very often stop inside the minus 0.66 to minus one sigma support zone. That's your area to expect continuation. In a downtrend, rallies often fail in the 0.66 to one sigma resistance zone. That's your area to expect rejection. Those are the zones where trends tend to hold. Third, overextension and tails. When RSI first hits plus minus square root of three sigma to plus minus 2.14 sigma overextension zone, you're in this could reverse territory. If it keeps going past that, you've left normal behavior completely. Either you manage risk tightly or you stand aside instead of trying to be a hero and call the exact top or bottom. Let's recap. 7030 is popular because it's simple, but it's not universal. It does not mean the same thing on RSI 2 and RSI 200, so it can't be your default. The adaptive approach solves that by standardizing first, then mapping those standardized moves back into 0 to 100 RSI in a smooth way. That gives you the zones that mean the same thing across lookbacks. That's what replaces 7030. I've left the freebie to the very end. If you want, the full 29-page RSI manifesto, which the research tables and implementation notes, is available on Gumroad. Price is set to $0, so take advantage of the link below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.